Hi, welcome to D8 Squared. Today I'm going to be uh, giving you a little review on this Blue Eddy or Blue Tea, however you want to pronounce it. I've heard it different ways. I'm going to call it a Blue Tea uh, battery pack. Uh, the model is EB3A. And what it is, is it's a 268 watt hour battery pack with a maximum power output of 600 watts. Although you can go higher than that, and I'll, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. There's a little bit of trickery that you can do in the app to get a higher wattage without uh, tripping it. Uh, more than likely, you are not going to be using more than 600 watts because even at 600 watts, this thing isn't even going to last 30 minutes. So just for a short burst of high power, it would work out pretty well, but it's really not meant to be delivering high power for long periods of time. So uh, let's get on to this. So in order to turn the display on, you just push any of the power buttons. So there's a power button here. That's to turn on all your DC. So you have like your standard cigarette lighter port here. Then you have a couple of other types of DC outputs. You have a couple of standard USB A's and a USB C that's limited to 100 watts. So uh, when I first pushed this power button, all it really did was turn the display on. You want to push and hold it for like a second and let go of it to actually get the output to turn on. So now you can see this green light is on. And you can see here that it says DC. So that turned on the DC output. The same goes for the AC output. So let's just push and hold that for a second. Let go. You can see here that it turned on the AC output. So right now both outputs are active, although nothing's plugged in. What you have down here is your power input. So it just uses a standard three-prong connector like you'd have on a computer or a monitor. It just plugs into there. There's no power brick necessary. That's built into the unit. This is to reset the, uh, basically a little breaker that's inside of there. And then this is to input uh, a solar panel. So you can input here your solar. So when you're charging it's charging at around, it'll charge at up to about 350 watt uh, watts input um, unless you also have your solar plugged in. Solar alone would be 200 watts, but if you have them both plugged in, it'll top out at about 430 watts. So with that being said, you can charge this for the most part in about under two hours really no matter how you're doing it. Unless you're doing solar, that might take a little bit longer. So uh, this model also offers a light here, two different modes or two different brightnesses and then an SOS mode. Um, on top of it, you have a wireless charger. So you can set your phone on there and charge it. Then you have this carrying handle. So back to this. Now let's um, let's plug in my computer. So I have a an Apple computer. It plugs off of a, it runs off a USB C. So let's go ahead and plug that in and see what kind of draw we get. So the chart it just started up, and my computer is only drawing around twenty around twenty watts or so. Uh, it's nice having that output. What you're seeing here now is the battery is charged at, at, to 100%, and at the current output, this is how much time the battery would last. So at what we're currently outputting, this battery will last for over nine hours. So it's kind of nice to see, you know, how much, you know, how much time you're going to have 
uh, when you have uh, anything plugged into it. Okay, so let's turn the display back on. So here you see the computer charging. So let's unplug the computer. And now let's plug in a lamp that I have into one of the AC ports. So I have the lamp now plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what kind of power draw we have. Uh, it's showing zero, which seems a bit unrealistic, but it must it's an LED lamp, so it must just be really efficient. So that's gonna last for 26 hours if we had we could run this lamp before this battery would die. If we go ahead and turn it off. Yeah, it really didn't change anything. So that must just be a very efficient LED lamp. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to try is I have a Dyson fan. We're going to plug that in and see how that uh, how that works out. So I have that plugged in. Let's turn on the display. And let's turn that fan on. And that is also showing zero watts. Okay. In the very lowest setting, I'm pretty much not getting much of an output. Now when I turn it up, you can see it starts to register. So it almost looks like if you get below 10 watts, it goes right to zero. So it doesn't really display your power output between zero and 10. It just goes right to zero if it's below 10. But in any case, when I turn this up on a higher speed, you can see my wattage goes up, but then my, uh, oh, let's turn the display back on, but my amount of time until I run out of juice on the battery goes down. So you can see the higher I turn up the fan, a lot more power and a lot less time. And now you can see the battery starting to drop to 99%. So let's turn that back down. So that's just another example of something plugged into the AC port. Now again, uh, this is with the, uh, the charger plugged in. And you can see this is blinking here that's showing that it's charging and then it'll be fully charged in about 0.1 hours because we uh we didn't run it down very far before we plugged it in but that's the indication you get when it's charging you can see what the input wattage is and now the closer it gets to 100 percent it starts to reduce the wattage to preserve the battery so it doesn't uh, damage the battery when it gets closer to full when a battery is more drained it charges at a faster rate. But overall, the, it should charge in around two hours or so. You can see here that I have the AC on and the DC on while it's charging. So you can do that. And what it also is doing is it's just passing the AC through from the wall to this. And that's what the UPS mode is. So it's not anything you have to turn on, it just automatically do, does that. But if you have something plugged in here, it just passes the electricity through unless the input power is disrupted. If the input power is disrupted, it acts like a UPS and it'll toggle over to power coming from the battery. So that's a really neat mode that this has, or neat feature. So next up, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about the app. So this has an app that you can control this and see the status of it without having to connect to Wi-Fi or anything. It's just a direct Bluetooth connection from your phone to your battery. So, so this is the app, which is showing what you have going on here. So on the upper left-hand corner, that would be the input that you'd be getting from your solar panel. 
in the upper right hand corner, that was the power coming in off the grid. And as you can see, it just dropped to zero because it just finished charging. It just got to 100%. Down in the bottom left, you have what your DC output is. Then in the bottom right, you have your AC output. And you can turn those outputs on and off with these toggle switches down here. So if you want to turn off the DC output or the AC output, you can do that with the switches down here. So let's go ahead and plug the fan back in and see what this shows on here. So let's first turn the AC ports on and then let's power the fan on and let's turn it up and you can see the wattage just like we were seeing on the display before. So you can see what your usage is. And then the red power button that you see in the kind of towards the bottom middle, you can p totally power this battery pack off with the app, but you won't be able to turn it back on with the app. You'd have to physically go over to the device and turn it back on because it, it is totally powered down. There's no way to connect back to it when that happens. The other thing that I didn't mention earlier and I forgot was on the wireless charger that's on top, you want to turn the DC power button on to do your, your wireless charging because that is a DC output to a wireless charger. It's not AC. So you have to have the DC turned on to use the wireless charger. Now there's a couple of other settings in here that we can go to. One of them, for example, was the thing that I had mentioned earlier, how you can actually go over 600 watts and that is by using the power lifting mode now as you can see here you can go up to 1200 watts but what it does is it actually reduces the voltage because power is current times voltage so in order to get to the 1200 watts and not going over technically 600 watts you have to reduce the voltage down in order to get there. So this is not suitable for devices like refrigerators or uh, refrigerators, air conditioners, and, and so on. It's mainly just for purely resistive loads, such as like a simple heater. You don't really want to have any fancy circuitry in there because it could damage it and you, you could end up with problems. So I would use this sparingly. As a matter of fact, I don't know that I'm ever going to use this because I just don't see the need. Because the other reason, like I had mentioned earlier, at 600 watts or at this tricked 1200 watts, you're not even going to get 30 minutes on this battery pack. You are going to drain this thing down in a hurry. So that is a little bit about that mode. There's a few different charging modes. There's standard, silent, and turbo. I recommend just leaving it on standard. You can go to silent if you want. It just doesn't turn on some internal fans that are inside the, the battery pack. The fans really aren't very loud, so I don't ever really see the need to go to silent. And then turbo will just charge it faster, but I feel that might sacrifice my battery a little bit, my battery longevity. So I'm not going to probably use turbo mode unless I absolutely have to. I'm going to just leave it in standard mode. There's also an eco mode, which after four hours or whatever you have set, the default is four hours, it'll shut down. So it'll basically just turn off that output after a certain amount of time in order to preserve the battery. So maybe you have something on there that you don't really want it to charge more than an hour or two. It's just going to get you enough. You don't want to it to go over because you're trying to preserve the battery in this thing for uh because it's going to be a while till you can charge it again you could turn it off after a certain amount of time the uh and this is the led light it's where you can turn that light on remotely from your phone um this is also where you would go to upgrade the firmware i recommend you know keeping the firmware up to date that way if there's any improvements made to either you know, battery life, charge time, uh, and so on, that you would get the latest 
uh, updates to that. So anyway, this is the Blue T EB3A, 600 watt max output with a 268 watt hour battery. I recommend this. This is a good balance between size and charge time. You, if you get some of the bigger units, it takes forever to charge them, you know, because they just have so much battery storage in them. Now, the advantage to that would be you can run so much more things before having to charge. But they're also heavier and more difficult to transport and store. So if you go much smaller than this, they're just not going to have that much use. I mean, you're going to run out of batteries so quick that it's almost not even worth having it. You might as well just get one of them little portable uh, battery packs then just charge your phone off of that or something and just not have AC. So this is a real good balance between size and how much capacity there is and also price. This was $200 on Amazon. So uh, it's for the money. This is the one I would recommend. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.